Hello everybody, it's Christina of Your Favorite Trio, and today I wanted to do something really exciting. This is going to be the first of a series that I kind of hope to do. I want to take a vegan makeup product that I like a lot and do kind of like an unusual tutorial that involves one product in a lot of different ways. I saw Kat Von D do something really similar on her channel and I love her, I love all of her products, so I figured why not give it a shot. I'm vegan, I would love to, you know, feature some vegan stuff on here, so most of the products, with the exception of two that I'll mention, are vegan, and I'm definitely open to any suggestions if anyone has anything in mind that's a better product or something comparable that's vegan or cruelty free, I would love to try it because it's frustrating <laughs> that there's so many products that flood our market and a lot of them are not cruelty free and a lot of them aren't vegan. So, okay, let's get started. So the first step that I want to do before I do anything is sanitize my hands. And you don't need to use this hand sanitizer, you can use whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Just because it's gross to touch your face if they're full of germs. Moving on to step two. I love Lush. I'm a Lush addict. This is one of my most favorite products from them. Can you see? Is the camera focusing? It's called Aroma Water. It's a toner product and I just think that it works really well. It tightens your pores. It kind of gives you a nice dewy canvas, especially if you have dry skin or even normal skin. I think this would work perfectly for you. It even has tea tree oil in it, so if you have oily skin this should probably help you as well. So I'm just gonna mist my face a couple times. Okay, next up, um, I'm going to use my favorite foundation ever, which is Kat Von D's Lock It Tattoo Foundation. This foundation is amazing. It has changed my life. It's ju It just covers everything, but it still looks like skin, and it's just great. She's she's She can do no wrong in my eyes, so I'm just gonna look away and at my mirror not into oblivion, so don't worry, I'm not doing anything too weird here. With a beauty blender and just dotted it into the different areas of my face that especially need the most coverage, and I'm just going to work my way through. So now that our base is down, I like to then move on to concealer. I have a few favorite concealers that I'm going to use kind of in succession with one another. One of them being Kat Von D's Lock It Tattoo Can Concealer, the matching concealer to the foundation. I just think that they pair really nicely together and this sets down a nice base for anything else that you want to put on top of it. So I'm just kind of squirting a little bead onto a different beauty blender, a clean one but stained, don't judge, and dotting that into my under eye area. <clears throat> I'm getting attacked by my own hair. Okay, that's down. So I am Italian and I have really dark under eye circles, so I like to kind of layer my concealers because I just, I need to. So the next one that I use is um, Excessive, uh, Excessive, no, Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics Concealer in Y0. Um, I think this stuff is amazing. It looks super light in pan, but then once you use it, I don't know, I just feel like it has an amazing consistency. Um, this one's a little thicker than the other one, than Kat Von D's Tattoo Concealer, I feel, so I like to layer them both. If you'd like to, you can also kind of put down a layer of powder in between if you're worried about creasing, but honestly, I haven't had trouble really with either of these creasing as long as I put some sort of powder on top. So I'm just patting this in with a different part of the same concealer beauty blender. I have two. I designate one towards concealer and then the other one for foundation, but honestly, you don't need to spend that much money. They're, they're expensive products. You could probably get away with just one. Okay. So we're going to do something next that's kind of become a popular thing on YouTube. It's called baking. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Um, you're just going to take kind of a thick layer of powder and put them over all areas of your face, specifically the areas that you want to stay the longest. So I'm just taking a big fluffy brush. This is a Real Techniques brush. Um, I believe, yep, just their powder brush. 
and I'm going to put that on my under eye area and <coughs> choke with the amount of stuff flying around the room here. In fact, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the pan here. I don't know if I actually specified. This is Sephora's, let's see, what are you called? Sephora's Bright Set. Um, and this is their yellow color. Um, the thing is that I used to use Anastasia Beverly Hills Banana Powder, but I found that that broke me out and it's also a very small pan. Um, this is the one of the two products I'm going to use that isn't vegan or cruelty free as far as I know. I did a little bit of research and couldn't find anything. Um, I would love to use something else. I am not willing to compromise for quality, so if you have anything in mind that you've used that you think is great and is vegan or cruelty free as far as like a setting powder or a highlighting under eye powder goes, I'm more than open to your suggestions. Comment down below and let me know. So I'm just dotting this along my cheekbone with my finger and then I'm gonna go in and blunt it out. It's really just laying the groundwork for where I want this contour to be. And this is a more pronounced contour, you know, if you're not comfortable with this for your bone structure or something like that. You absolutely don't have to do this, it's not necessary, but because I'm doing such an outlandish look, um, I don't mind a crazy contour to go with it. And if you can't tell, I'm not a makeup artist, so if you have any better tips and tricks to do this, please do it, because you probably know better than me. I just figured I'd share the little bit that I've learned, which by the way is mostly from YouTube, and that's that. I like to do a little contour on my nose and bring it up towards the arch of where my forehead area, whatever that's called, meets my nose, you know what I mean? You can kind of see this starting to make a little bit of sense maybe, hopefully. Just adding some definition, I don't like to do anything too crazy to like change my bone structure or anything else. Okay, that's that. Um, now I'm going to go in, this is a Sephora Pro Contour Blender. It's got a really cool shape to it, I'm not sure if you can 100% see, but it's got really dense bristles and like a nice half moon shape. I find it really nice for blending out lines and you can kind of like pat it, pat the product into your face. Um, you don't have to use this, you can use whatever tool that you'd like, fan brushes, you can honestly squeeze together the bristles of, you know, other less dense brushes and you can make it work, really, whatever you, whatever you want, your dreams can come true. Swear to God, real, true story. Okay, next thing I'd like to use is another Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics product. As you can tell, I really like these products. Um, I'm not sure how easy they are to find anymore. I know they've been going through a lot of different changes with their line, um, but you know, if you can find it online, I feel like it's really great. This is the color Discipline, and from everything I've seen advertised, it's made more for the eye area, but I find that it's a little less pigmented than I would love. Um, so I'm actually going to use it as kind of like a transition between my contour and the highlight that I plan to use. Because I spent $18 on this and I want to do something with it. So it's kind of it's like a sheer rosy brown kind of, on my skin tone at least. So I'm just really putting it towards the outer part of um, my contour. That's it. Just a little bit. It looks, looks pretty severe in this lighting, but it actually doesn't look so bad in person. So I'm just taking my word for it. I'm going to take a Real Techniques blush brush and just kind of blend everything all together, make it not look so harsh. Okay, so I have my contour in place, I have my base down, so now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. All right, so this is the star of the show. This is Jeffree Star Cosmetics. This is in the color Abused. Um, I know that this was released a while ago, back in the summertime, he had um, a bunch of blue colors that he released, all of which I have, by the way, that I would love to show you guys at some point. Um, so, yeah, but he re-released this. It actually just went on the website, I wanna say two days ago. So I thought maybe I would do something fun with it just in case yours is coming in the mail and you haven't done anything with it yet. So let's get started. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of traditionally apply this to my lips. Just getting enough product. Done! <laughs> I find that this applicator is actually pretty precise. You don't need to do too much finagling with it. I actually forgot to um, exfoliate my lips. If you have a lip scrub, I actually have a lush one that I can show you guys if you'd like in a future video how to use. But I forgot. It happens. Whatever. I'm using an Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics um, brush that has a really kind of uh, dome-shaped but yet flat. I'm doing a poor job of showing what this looks like tip and I'm gonna use the preciseness of that to just get the outline around my mouth to be perfect because I'm obsessed like that. Really not a necessary step unless you'd like to. Okay, so now I have that out of the way. Whoa, <laughs> I'm sorry, just getting used to this. Okay, so now that's done. And now into some of the fun areas of this. Let me just get the right brushes. I'm going to start using this as an eye product. So what I'd like to do is take the wand out of here. I'm actually gonna place this where you can actually see it. Um, I'm taking the brush that actually came with my Urban Decay Naked 2 palette and what I'm going to do is put the product on the flatter shader side of the brush like that and I'm going to start placing this on my eye. I'm going to place this in the crease area kind of like the outer V and we are going to make it look not like you just put liquid lipstick on your eye. It might be a little easier actually to place the product on a less dense brush, but hey, we're figuring this out together. It's fine. Don't judge me and I won't judge you. This is a really crappy e.l.f. professional blending brush because I'm pretty sure that all the pros rush out and they buy this at Target. They're like, professional brushes, yes. So, I'm just blending the... <laughs> ah! It went everywhere. Yeah, rub that on your eye. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Okay. You know, this is why not everybody is Kat Von D, and that's, that's fine. Yeah! I don't love it! So we're going to take off the eye stuff and we're going to try one more time. Okay. It's still going. The pause button doesn't work. It's, it's still going. It refuses to stop. And I don't know what I'm doing. Hi. Okay, can't figure out how to get the camera to stop recording. So, I'm gonna let you guys, whoa, whoa, throwing stuff around violently. I'm going to let you uh, take a gander at the beauty that is this creation. Quite honestly, it doesn't look that bad. So we're gonna save it. We're gonna make this work with the power of blending. The thing with this product is that it's meant for long wear, which is fabulous, but it makes it quite difficult. But with the power of blending, you could do anything. So I'm just gonna, just gonna make this look purposeful here, and just continue kind of making this exist. Okay, you know we 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 did it sort of. So let's let's try this again on the other eye, and we'll pull it all together in the end. So stay with me if you're like, what is this girl doing with blue lipstick on her eye and it looks like shit? You're not wrong, but we're gonna make this look okay. Starting in the areas that I want the darkest, we're just gonna kinda work our way out. I feel like there's potentially too much product and maybe that's, that's my downfall. But we're learning together, so it's fine.
and just working it into my crease and upwards. And now I'm going to go on to the lower lash line. Let me just get the proper tools. I'm going to use this brush. You know what? I actually can barely read it. I got this in an Ipsy uh, thing a long time ago. Um, it looks like it's really just like a standard kind of a pencil brush. And I'm going to put a little more product just on the tip. I'm going to try not to go crazy this time because we've seen what happens when I do. We use the fluffier side of the brush to do some smudging and work it. Work it in, yas! Yas girl, blend! I'm trying. I'm definitely trying. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pre repeat the same process on the other eye. This is what we're working with so far. Just a really deep, sultry blue eye that I actually, I really like. So we're gonna make this work. <laughs> How many times can I say that in this video? Um, yeah. I'm going to do some other things to try and make different parts stand out because right now it's, a, it's pretty flat. I, I really kind of just overdid this <laughs> with the blue everywhere. So I'm just really starting at the corner. I just did a really quick basic line and now bringing it inwards across my eyelid. Can you see? This is the NYX Jumbo Crayon in Milk. It's pretty pretty cult, pretty known, I feel like. So if you have this lying around, um, feel free to use this to kind of lighten up any areas that got a little bit too dark. I mean, this is an unusual tutorial, so, you know, you may not have crazy experience doing something like this, and I think that's fine. I don't. We're trying. So I'm just putting this in the areas towards the inner corner of my eye and upwards near my brow area that I wanted to be a little bit lighter and that unintentionally got a bit too dark. So you can see I just kind of laid that in those areas and I'm just with my finger going to blend it together and it kind of makes it look like a nice nice gradient actually. It looks pretty cool. And now for potentially the most different part of the tutorial, I'm going to turn the product into an eyebrow product. My faith in myself is low, but that's okay because I don't know. It'll be fine. But I'm just gonna go in and start creating small hair-like strokes throughout my eyebrow. I'm not creating any harsh lines. I'm not trying to entirely redraw my eyebrow, but instead just some thin strokes. And that's the finished product. It, it really doesn't look so bad, I have to say. I mean, I kind of have thicker, bushier brows, especially towards the front and uh, but I think it looks okay. I'm just going through and creating. It's really coming out like a kind of tadpole shape on camera, but my eyebrows aren't actually that thin all the way throughout. They're actually quite thick. So that's one brow. And now I'm going to work on the other. You know, the multitude of this look was done with what's meant to be a liquid lipstick, so I think it came out pretty good. I'm going to use Urban Decay's Solstice Eyeshadow. This was one of the newer Moon Dust shadows that they came out with. I love it. It's such a pretty metallic red, but it has like a bluey purple shift in it. And I think it would look really cool towards that inner corner that we made a bit lighter. So I'm just packing that on with my finger. I think that that's how this shadow is best best applied. And I'm also going to take a little bit of the shadow and put it on the center of my bottom lip and the 
the top of my cupid's bow. Now I'm just going to finish off with some mascara. I actually forgot to put on highlighter before, so I'm just going to dust a little bit on after that. I'm just using, this is Sephora brand mascara. I believe this is their volumizing mascara. It's got this really unusual bottle, which is quite honestly what drew me towards it. I don't know of any good cruelty-free or vegan, oh I'm sorry, this is the Outrageous Curl uh, mascara. I don't know of any good vegan or cruelty-free mascaras, so if you do, please let me know. And I'm going to take a little bit of that Moon Dust shadow and use that as our highlighter. In fact, I think I might even use that on my cheeks, so I'm just dotting it in here and I'm just going to put some under the brow. So it's pretty subtle, but you can actually see some of the the sparkle showing up in real life here. <laughs> Gonna put some on the top of the cheeks and on the actual apples of the cheeks here and down the nose. And I got some purple on my nose. <coughs> and rubbing made it worse. Good. It's a good look. And that's actually our finished look. <laughs> so, <coughs> are you really impressed? You should be so impressed. I don't know if this came out exactly as I was picturing it would, but I'm just going to bring you a bit closer so that you can get an idea of what the eyes actually look like. You know, I feel like it's pretty cool. Um, it looks really Tumblr to me. <laughs> it looks like something that you'd see and you're like, oh wow, but like you don't really feel brave enough necessarily to wear it. And I don't know if I'm brave enough to wear this in public. I'd like to even look at the mouth. <sighs> um, but you know what, this was a lot of fun for me and I would love to show you perhaps more normal tutorials and definitely more featuring Jeffree Star products because they're so good. There's so much product in here for $18 and it's cruelty free, it's vegan, it lasts forever and it's just awesome. So yeah, so that I think kind of does it for this tutorial. You know, I hope maybe that you enjoyed at least part of it. Um, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like me to do in the future, just please comment down below, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, I'd love to show so many more vegan things, so this is really just the start, and I wanted to kind of start with a bang, so there you go. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for watching, and hope you have a great day. Bye!